The tech world is abuzz with hype about GPT-3, a new AI model that is doing impressive things. Massive language models like GPT-3 keep impressing us with their abilities. One demo that I really enjoyed is, is this one of a website where you can type a description of a, a web application and that description would be sent to GPT-3. GPT-3 would actually generate code um, and build that website for you. Basically. It's a simple, tiny React application, but I thought this was impressive uh, as, as far as language model and, and machine learning applications are, uh, are involved. Another interesting application is this that uses GPT-3 uh, inside of a spreadsheet. And so it was able to figure out the relationship but this, notice that this is not a calculation, it's actually going and getting that piece of information. Well, that piece of information is actually encoded inside of GPT-3. And so um, I thought this was really impressive. You can find multiple uh, examples and demos, and they will keep rolling in um, in the next days and weeks uh, of things that GPT-3 and massive language models like the GPT-3 are able to do. Now, GPT-3 is actually two things. It's an API served by uh, OpenAI, a company and a foundation that does uh, AI research. And that a API is in invite-only beta now, so you apply and they give you access, and then you're able to send prompts, input prompts, and interact with, with, with the AI. And then inside that API, on the servers of OpenAI, is a machine learning model called GPT-3. And that is the model that we will be talking about. I want to remove the aura of mystery and explain some of the main concepts uh, behind how a model such as this is built and trained and how it works. And that's what we will be talking about in this video. So we can think of OpenAI GPT-3 as a model, as a black box that takes an input, a series or a sequence of words, and it generates an output, which is another sequence of words. This is an example uh, from the foundation and the work of Isaac Asimov for the three laws of robotics. Um, so this is not an actual example. I just um, use this. So at the simplest way, you can think of it as a machine learning model that takes, let's say, a sentence or text and outputs um, some more text. And then the output is generated using what the model has learned during its training phase. The training phase, we start with an untrained model. And in this case, the model was trained against a lot of data, uh, 300 billion tokens. Uh, you can think of a token as a word. Uh, so this was a lot of text collected from the internet and the model was trained uh, on a specific task against all of this data. What is the task that the model was trained on? It is predicting the next word. And so we present a few words to the model, uh, a sequence of words, and we say, okay, predict the next word. Um, and the model has to do that. Um, and it will, after millions of steps, it learns something and it captures something uh, from the, let's say, probability distributions and the statistical relationships inside of those examples of text. And we'll look at that um, in this next video. So how do we generate training examples from the text? So let's say we have this sentence at the top, the second law of robotic. A robot must obey the orders given it by human beings. We can generate multiple examples that we train the model uh, against. So we can take four or five of these um, words as input and we say, okay, generate the, the sixth word, which is A in this case. And then we can generate another example by saying, okay, we'll give you six words and you generate the seventh word. Or, or, or predict it, and so on and so forth. And if you crawl the internet and get text from forums and uh, websites and, and newspapers, you'll end up with a lot of text and you can break it down like this and generate millions or even billions of examples for the AI to be able to uh, train from, or for the machine learning model to be able to learn from. This is a one step of the training process that we just discussed. So we have the example that we generated. So we know that a robot must, let's say, obey. Uh, we present the model with only the three words in green, a robot must. And we say, okay, predict the next word. We don't show it the actual answer, but we know what that is. So we present this 
these examples to the model. The model makes a calculation. We'll talk later about how that calculation is made at just a high level. And it generates an output. And that output is not going to be a good output because this model is not yet fully trained. It's untrained or it's starting to go through the training process. And so we say, hmm, you generated uh, an output of a word that is troll, uh, which is incorrect. The correct answer we were expecting is obey. Um, we have a way of calculating the error. We, have, we can quantify how much this um, prediction was wrong or how much it was off. Um, and then that error calculation is fed back into the model where we update the weights or parameters of the model, or we update how the model works so that the next time it makes it comes across this example, it's able to generate a, uh, a better prediction, uh, a prediction that is much closer to obey than it is to troll. And so this is the basic step for training machine learning models. This is not novel. Um, a lot of what we'll discuss here is uh, an explanation of how GPT-3 works, not what it invented uh, or what is you know, novel in this model. And so this is, if you've come across machine learning examples before, this is the loop that is usually used in, in, in supervised training um, of, of machine learning models. Now, let's look at these steps with a little bit more detail. And so the model actually takes each token or each word um, uh, at a time, and it outputs its output uh, also one token at a time. I just mentioned that this video, we're just discussing how the model works and not what is novel or what is new in it. And the main thing that is actually new in, in the GPT-3 is the size. The model is massive. What is the size of a model? The model contains a lot of numbers uh, called parameters or weights. And GPT-3 contains 175 billion of these. Now you can look at my first video of the int my intro to AI and in that we look at a simple machine learning model with one weight, one parameter that we can make predictions using. Now this is some of the latest um, high tech models and it's using 175 billion parameters. And these are numbers that the model uses to encode what it learns from being exposed to all of this text. And so I'd refer you to, to my intro to AI to have a little bit of an understanding of what a parameter is of a model. And these models, these, these parameters are uh, sorted into uh, various matrices inside the model. Um, and the, the, the process of generating a prediction is mostly multiplying these different matrices uh, together by the input that the model gets at each to with each token. Now, another way of looking more closely at GPT-3 is to say um, that each word, each token flows through a track and the model has a context window of 2048 uh, tokens. And so the input and output have, have to uh, fit within that number of tokens. And there are ways of going beyond that. You can adjust the model of doing to do uh, more than that number of tokens. But uh, for all we understand right now, or one good way of, to start to understand um, how a transformer model like GPT-3 uh, works is to think about um, the number of tokens it, it's, uh, it can process. And each of these tokens is, is processed on its own in its own track. And then once we've processed all of the inputs, the model starts to generate tokens that we can uh, use as output or think of as the output of, of the model. One way of thinking how the model works is this. So you have the words, and with every word, you have a vector representing that word. And I would like to refer you to my um, illustrated word to vec uh, posts on my blog if you want to understand a little bit more about word embeddings. Um, and in this case, each word has a list, has a vector or a list of numbers that capture um, some of the meaning uh, and represent that word. And those are the boxes here in, in yellow and, and green and all the way to blue. When we process a word, we actually process the vector. And that vector goes through uh, various layers of transformer decoders. GPT-3 has 96 of these. You see how these are, are stacked one on top of each other. This is the depth 
when you hear deep learning. Deep learning is, is these models that are a little bit more um, complicated. They're able to extract uh, or make predictions that are a little bit more, let's say, sophisticated using various number or you know high number of, of layers where the computation flows between them. And we see that earlier uh, layers process different things than what later layers would, would, would be able to process. And so this is the processing of the first token, and then the second token goes in and it's, it's processed through every layer, uh, and then every token in the input sequence goes in. And then when we are processing the last token in the input, the output we, we, we will start generate. And so if this is an example where we're giving a command to this um, AI model, and then this is its response to us. So we tell it, okay, a robot must obey the orders given it. And this is, it would respond to us, hopefully, okay, human, and it would do it in this way. So this is just a, an X-ray in, into how this model is structured and how it processes its input and, and, and output. In the React code generation example that we've seen before, uh, my assumption is that the model works like this. So the description is, is given as an input to the model, but we also have to give it a number of examples to prime the model to generate the kind of output, so to, to let it know that we're expecting React code when we give you this description. Um, and then to do that, we have to give the model two or three or 10 or, or, or more examples of description, code, description, code. And between these examples, we have uh, special tokens. Um, so this is my assumption of how this works, given how GPT-2 works and how previous uh, transformer language models um, have worked. We don't have an implementation to look at yet uh, for GPT-3, but this is my, uh, my best assumption. And that input goes in, it's processed token by token, and then the model is, is able to generate its, its output like this. Now, we have not seen the best demos of what GPT-3 is able to do. These will start rolling in in the coming weeks and months. That's because the model is going to be able to do more amazing things once OpenAI releases the ability or the feature of uh, being able to fine-tune the model. And this is one of the tools in, in large machine learning, let's say language models and other models that has enabled some, some of the really impressive results so far. GPT-3, as we've discussed, uses the same model, the same weights that were trained and cost whatever, $5 million or $4.6 million to, 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 to train in 355 um, years of, of GPU time if you're to process it in one GPU. So that training process has been done and then every demo that we've seen so far uses that one model with no updates to the weight. Uh, just changes in the prompt and the input to be able to get the model to do more interesting things. Now, fine-tuning is something that's going to be rolled out, um, I believe, soon, we've heard from, from OpenAI. And in that case, you give the model, you give OpenAI or the, the, the API more examples, and the model is actually trained a little bit more, and the weights are updated. So the model is able to create better websites, or do better translation from one language to another. And we'll start to see some really impressive demos once this is, is ripped out. So this is it. This is a high-level overview of how GPT-3 works. Hope you've enjoyed it. Please let me know if you have any uh, ideas or comments. Uh, please subscribe and like, and uh, see you in the next video.